Good morning, Vineyard Columbus. My name is Nick, and I'm one of the worship leaders here. Whether you're here in person or online, we're so glad you chose to come and worship with us today. We like to start our services with a time to offer worship to God, and today we've got baptisms. People are dedicating themselves to Jesus and their faith in him, so we're going to praise him and celebrate with them. But please stand, bring everything with you. Let's worship together, and let's praise God. Amen.
glory shot on us if you would just give us a glimpse of your goodness that would be enough we want to see you face to face lord let your glory shine on us so grateful to be able to worship with you all this morning and I know normally at this point we would uh, dismiss our middle schoolers but you guys are going to be hanging out with us this morning because middle school is away at winter camp but we are so happy to have you're still here let's give our middle schoolers a clap we're happy to have you guys here you'll enjoy yourselves with us and if you are new and visiting us for the first time, whether or not you are here in person or you're here online with us, we would love to be able to just talk to you and say hey. And the easiest way that you can do that is by texting hi to 98977. You're gonna get a little digital form, fill that out. We're gonna say hey, thank you for coming to our church. Answer any questions that, we, that you might have for us. And if you are here in person, we would love to meet you in person. You can just come to the guest central location that's out in the lobby. I'll be there, so as other pastors, we would love to actually get to meet you and welcome you to our church in person. And if you're if you're going to fill out that card, if the, if you're the first, uh, this is your first time filling it out. You are going to we're going to make a five dollar donation to an organization that's doing well uh, for those in need in our city. So we just want to thank you in advance for filling that out. So now we're going to move into our time of giving. 
Now, you might have heard me a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that it was the beginning of Black History Month and that Vineyard Columbus was honoring Black History Month in, the, in a variety of ways. And I also said that this is a significant time for African Americans, of course, but it's a great time for everyone, especially here at Vineyard Columbus. And it's not just because it's like the correct thing to do, right? It's because of Revelation 7, 9, actually that says that heaven is full of every nation, tribe, peoples, and tongues. That heaven looks like this, it's diverse. God didn't strip that away from us when we, when we get up there. And so as we give today, give thanks, thank the Lord that we get a little taste, we get a little glimpse of heaven here, not just here on earth, but here at Vineyard Columbus. This is a blessing that every church does not get to have, and we have that. And so we should thank God for it and ask him, how do we steward it better? How do we love and appreciate the differences that he has made us to be here at the church? Okay, amen. So I'm going to pray over our offering. If you want to give, you can uh, text GIVE to 98977. Or if you're here in person, you can give after the ushers uh, pass the bags down your road. They'll come down after we pray. Join me in praying. Lord, thank you for just the beauty you have made in us. I know that sometimes our differences can make it difficult, Lord, but we just come to you and we thank you for how you've made us. We thank you for how you love us. And we ask, Lord, that you would show us and pour into us to love each other the way that you love us, to see each other through your eyes, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So the ushers are going to come down. They're going to pass the offering bags down your rows, and we get to hear a special song. Tis so sweet to trust in. Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, and to know the same. The Lord, I'm so glad that I learned to trust you, precious Jesus, Savior and friend, and I know that you
trust him more. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. God's a good God at all times. And all the time, God is good. How many of you all know it is sweet to trust in Jesus? It is sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. How many of you all came to hear a word from the Lord on today? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let me begin by saying Vineyard is one church meeting in multiple locations, and so we certainly want to um, welcome those of you all who are listening online as well as our Vineyard Columbus East Campus. It is a blessing to come before you here on today. Um, for those of you all who have been with us, we have been in a series called Naturally Supernatural. And it's in that series that we have tried to emphasize the central role that the Holy Spirit um, has in the life of the believer. And specifically, we have zoomed in our sermonic spotlight on the book of Luke. And it's in that book of Luke I want you to join me here on today, Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. Luke chapter 7, verses 1 through 10. There you'll find some words that sound a little bit like this. When Jesus had finished saving all, saying to all the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There's a centurion serv there was a centurion servant whom his master valued highly was sick and was about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, this man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes, and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. I have an assignment today to talk about the role of faith in healing. The role of faith in healing. Would you pray with me? God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, God who has brought us thus far along the way, God who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. As many of you all know, I've had the privilege to um, attend and graduate from uh, Morehouse College. Uh, Morehouse is one of the 107 historically black colleges and universities in our country. And how ironic it is here in February as we celebrate Black History Month that within the month of February, 18 of these historic institutions have had to endure bomb threats by those who want to terrorize and minimize the significance of these institutions. I just want to take a moment as a proud graduate of an HBCU and as a pastor at a multi-ethnic church to affirm the dignity and the beauty of these institutions. That all of us are made in the image of God and our beloved community does indeed stand with you. But I tell you, Vineyard, I would not trade the experience I had at Morehouse for mostly anything in the world. One of those experiences that were instrumental in my uh, development came courtesy of another Morehouse alum by the name of Dr. Henry Gore. Dr. Gore was the chair of the mathematics department. He was a brilliant brother who spoke several languages, had a PhD from the University of Mi I mean the uh, school up north, um, and um, his reputation uh, preceded him. And uh, because I was a math major, uh, encountering Dr. Gore was inevitable. In fact, in my first uh, upper level uh, mathematics course, Advanced Calculus, Dr. Gore burst into the uh, door on the first day of class. 
said to a room full of men these words. He said, I believe in God. I believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And I believe that the Word of God is law. He went on to say, if you want to succeed in my class, there are three things you must do. First of all, believe in God. Secondly, pray to God. And thirdly, obey me, Dr. Gore. <laughs> he went on to say, I have things called pop quizzes and then pop pop quizzes. There was a brother in the back, raised his hand, said, Doc, what is the pop pop quiz? He said, I'm glad you asked. He said, I will come to class with the intent to lecture. But as soon as my hand hits the doorknob, the Spirit of God <laughs> will lead me to throw a test. So in that sense, I'm popped and then you're popped. <laughs> pop, pop. People ask me all the time, how did you get uh, in the ministry for mathematics? Dr. Gore was the reason. Because in order to get to that man's department, all of us had to learn to pray and believe in God just to get through. <laughs> well, years later, as an alum, I returned back to Morehouse, and lo and behold, in my path walked Dr. Gore. And since I had my degree, grew a little bit of a mustache and mustered up some courage, and I asked him, though, I said, Doc, why do you think that the Spirit led you to give us so many pop quizzes? Friends, listen to what he said. He said, Brother Montgomery, because I wanted you all to learn that you won't always be prepared for what lands on your desk. Amen. So I gave you a pop quiz to see if you were listening and learning to what I've been trying to teach you. But you won't always be prepared for what lands on your desk. Somebody haven't given, hasn't given an early amen in this sermon, you haven't wrote an amen in the chat because you're still thinking I'm talking about mathematics. You've already made it up in your mind, Reverend, I don't even like math. But friends, I'm really talking about life. Because life has a way of giving you and I some pop quizzes. And if you live long enough, you will find out that you're not always prepared for what life will throw at you. That there are some seasoned saints listening to me who can look back over your life and testify that, that life has a way of bringing you some stuff that you didn't see coming. Some problems that you didn't prepare for some fights that were not in your forecast, that life has a way of catching you off guard or throwing some things at you that you never thought that you'd have to live through. Can I call the world this morning? An unprecedented pandemic. Mask mandates. Economic instability. Wars and rumors of war. I tell you that life has a way of ushering in some situations that you never thought as a saint of God that you'd have to walk through. That life can bring you and I some pop quizzes, but let me give you some good news about the pop quizzes of life. That when you find yourself encountering an issue that you didn't see coming, with a problem you didn't prepare for, with a fight that was not in your forecast, when you've been caught off guard, the good thing about life's pop quizzes is that they're always multiple choice. But no matter what it is, the question is, what are you going to do when life puts you in a place where you're trying to figure out what's my next step or what in the world I'm going to do? There's always and only four choices. Can I give you the multiple choice answers to life pop quizzes? A, you can deal with it yourself. B, you can call on family and friends. C, you can ignore it or run from it. Or D, you can give it to God. And listen, if you've been listening and learning in life, and even from the lessons we've been trying to teach in this series, you already know there's only one right answer. Because if you haven't lived long enough or haven't been here, let me tell you what it is. A is not the answer because you will find out that life will bring you some issues that you didn't have the resources or the capacity to deal with. And you and I, we can't handle everything by ourselves. B, wrong answer, because you will find out quickly that you'll get some real enemies and some fake friends in life. And how many of you know, though, though your family may love you, they can't always help you with the things that you're going through? C, Wrong answer, because there's some things you can run from, but you can't hide. 
Listen, how many of you all know if you've lived long enough, you'll find out that the only thing that you can do, the only reasonable answer when you've been caught off guard is to learn to give it to God. To fall on your knees, to lift up your voice in prayer and say, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, to put it in the hands of God. Knowing that God is able to handle any situation you find yourself in, do I have a witness? That you and I have to learn how to trust God. And hear me, the manifestation of that trust is a word called faith. Somebody say faith. Yeah, faith. What, what does faith look like? Maybe, just maybe, we can, we can see it. As we said, we'll center ourselves on the story of the centurion, a centurion who encounters our Savior. Do me a favor and jaywalk with me one more time. Back in Luke chapter 7, here we find Jesus in a little town called Capernaum. And while he's there, he's met with a uh, group of Jewish elders. The Jewish elders have not come to uh, debate doctrine. They've not come to accuse him of false teaching. They're not even, ar they're not even here to argue about who, whether he's the Messiah, but they've come on the behalf and the request of a Roman centurion who has a servant who is dying. Let me pause parenthetically and say that during this time in the New Testament that the Jewish people were under Roman occupation. And these centurions were kind of like uh, the backbone of the Roman army commanding around 100 soldiers. But in the New Testament, centurions are generally uh, perceived in a favorable light. You remember in Acts 10, uh, the centurion Cornelius was among the first of Gentile converts. Or maybe you remember that, 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 that centurion who saw Jesus dying on the cross for your sins and mine. He said, surely this was the Son of God. Centurions are generally perceived in a favorable light. In fact, in the text, the Jews have come to Jesus because this centurion is a benefactor, supposedly, of the Jewish people. The record is that uh, their synagogue was paid for by the Roman centurion. So when this servant is dying, the Roman centurion calls in the favor. He goes to the Jewish elders and he says, listen, I've heard about this Jesus, so uh, do me a solid. Go to him and see if he'll come and heal my servant. So go to Jesus on behalf of the Roman centurion and listen to their conversation. They say, Lord, we need you to hook up the Roman centurion because he's deserving. You know, he paid for the church. When you walk in the synagogue, you see a plaque with his name on it. And because of what he's done, we need you to hook him up. Jesus agrees, makes his way to the centurion's home. And the Bible says, while he's still making his way, the Roman centurion sends out some other friends with another message. And they go to Jesus and they say, listen, the centurion wants you to know that he's not worthy of coming to you. And he's not worthy of you coming into his house. So here's what he says, Lord, you don't have to show up to my house. You can stop right there, and if you just say the word, my servant will be healed. The Bible says Jesus turns around. The crowd says, y'all hear that? I have never seen such great faith in all of Israel. <laughs> you got to get this because the Greek word that he uses for great faith Y'all, this is the only story in the Scripture where Jesus amplifies and marvels at faith in this manner. He, he calls it a, a great faith. Most of the time, when Jesus talks about somebody's faith, it's in a critical nature. Oh, ye, a little faith. Or how is it that you have no faith? But here Jesus marvels at this man's faith and says, that's the type of faith that I'm talking about. So here's a question on the floor. What makes Jesus marvel at his faith? Or better yet, what does faith look like that makes God say, now that's real faith? 
that that's the type of faith that I'm talking about. Well, let me give you a few things about it. Then maybe we can go to brunch. If you haven't daydreamed on me, you'd want to know that this man is not a Jew. He's a Roman soldier. And so he sends Jews on his behalf because he really does not have a relationship with the Lord. And so he sends for Jesus with the expectation that Jesus will come, but he does not know what the Lord is going to do. Stay with me. He sends for Jesus, expecting Jesus to say yes, but prepared for him to say no. He, he, he calls on the Lord, hoping the Lord will do what he wants. But he's prepared for God not to answer the way he's asked, suggesting that real faith expects a yes, but can endure a no. Boy, I just lit up in your driveway. <laughs> because most of us believe that when we pray and we say amen, it ought to give us an automatic yes. That whatever you pray for, that the Lord is going to do. And so we become frustrated when we pray and God doesn't do what we ask God to do. Friends, that's not real faith. Real faith says, I want God to do it this way. But if the Lord chooses not to do what I ask him to do, I still have faith that he's God and he's able to do it even better. Okay, okay. I, I, I already know I'm not preaching to everybody because some of you all just need God to say yes. But there's a couple people listening to me who can endure and know and say, God, if you don't do it, I still bless you. I still worship you. I still serve because I can handle a no. Watch how it goes down. He sends word to Jesus and asks Jesus to come, verse 3. But in verse 6, East Campus, when Jesus is on his way, he sends word to say, don't come. Don't miss this. The prayer request is to come. Then he shows up, and the man, and the man says, don't come. How can he ask the Lord to come and then go out and tell him, you don't have to come? Maybe it's because he's realized in his faith, I know what I asked you to do, but you don't have to do it the way I asked you. I'm going to let you handle it however you want to handle it. I've got enough faith to know if you don't do it my way, you can still get the job done. And that's when you know that you've got some real faith. When you can ask God for what you want, and then step back and say, God, you don't have to do it my way. God, just get it done. All right. All right. All right. Some of y'all ain't saying that man. Let me see if I can illustrate it for you. Uh, I told y'all I was at this uh, alumni function uh, back in Morehouse, and one of the things Morehouse men have to have is what we call uh, Morehouse mystique. Uh, President uh, Robert Franklin uh, said the mystique consists of five wells. You got to be well-read, uh, well-spoken, well-traveled. Uh, well-balanced and, yes, uh, well-dressed. Uh, so I was headed uh, back to my reunion, uh, first reunion at the house, and I, and I got uh, to let them know that, uh, you know, I wanted to let them know I had, a, had some mystique, so I got a custom-made suit because I wanted to be uh, well-dressed, so I decided to get a custom-made suit. So I went to the tailor. And, y'all, if you've never been there, it, it's awesome to give you these uh, fabrics uh, to look at. It, it's just awesome. And I wanted everybody to know uh, that I had a, a custom suit. So I said, listen, I, I want a lapel uh, pin that's a different color. Uh, and I want uh, some stitching to be a different color. I want my, 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 my pockets uh, to flare out. And I want a button on the back. I want a cuff on the bottom. And I want uh, my, my, my initials, Cam Jr., on the sleeve. <laughs> Y'all, my tailor looked at me. He said, Charles, can I be honest? I said, yeah. He said, bruh, that's ratchet. I said, I know, but I want to look good. He said, brother, I know, but you need to know that I've been making suits for a long time, and I know what you want, but I need you to trust me 
to be able to put it together in a way that makes you look good. You ain't got to tell me everything. All you've got to do is pick the fabric and trust that I know how to make you look good. See, I came to preach to somebody this morning that's giving God a long list of everything that you want him to do. Baby, it don't take all that. Just give it to God and know that he knows how to make you look good. Do you have enough faith to accept and know and let God do it however God wants to do it? Let me give you number two. Well, I'm going to develop it first. Notice when he sends word to Jesus, the first thing he says is, Lord, I'm not worthy. Now, you'll miss that if you don't remember why the Jews asked Jesus to come in the first place. The word of the Jews to Jesus was, you need to do this because he's deserving. I mean, look at all the stuff that he's done. He's built the church. He shows up to worship. He's a small group leader. He's involved in ministries. He's at the North Side Food Pantry. The Jews give Jesus the list of everything this brother's done. And he sends word to Jesus and says, uh, listen, Lord, I know that they know the stuff I've done. But there is some other stuff I've done that they don't know about. Hear me. Your religious resume is only half of you. Chances are, most folk listening to me this Sunday have some Friday night stuff you don't talk about when you come into the house of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he says, Lord, I'm not worthy. What he's doing, Gina, is he's detaching his request from his religious resume. I don't expect you to do it because of what I've done. But Lord, I expect you to do it because of who you are. Friends, there are two types of people who pray. People who pray expecting God to do it because of what they've done. And people who pray expecting God to do it because of who God is. I know I'm right. I know I'm right because when we get to know, some of us get so frustrated and we begin to think about everything we've done that God should have said yes for. You come to church every week, you read your Bible, you give a tithe and not a tip, you give and the story continues, and we come to prayer with a quid pro quo. God, you do this because I did that. Now, now, the problem with that, if you would tease this out with me for a moment, the problem is when what you need from God is greater than what you deserve. And you haven't earned it by going to small group. You didn't earn it by being involved in ministry. You need God to do something greater than you deserve. Can I ask you a question? Have you ever been there when your prayer request was greater than your righteousness? That's why the man starts his prayer saying, look, Lord, let's get the facts straight. I know and you know that I'm unworthy, that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. But listen, this is how real faith kicks in. It's real faith when I can confess I'm unworthy yet still ask for what I need. That I can be honest with God, that I'm not what I should be, yet in faith still expect him to do what I need to have done. And I'm bringing this up because the devil will try to convince us that when we're unworthy, God is not going to do anything for us. When you and I have great faith in God, we can confess our unworthiness and still believe that God is going to heal. Let me help you. The, the, the older I get, uh, y'all, I love uh, the hymns of the church. Uh, Pastor Rich mentioned one last week that caught my attention. 
What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Because the hymnologist understood that prayer is a privilege. But I came to remind you that prayer is also a right. You don't have to believe me. The Bible says, since we have a high priest by the name of Jesus, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might find mercy and grace in the time of need. I need to say that again. Since we have a great high priest, watch this. Even when we're unworthy, let us come boldly before his throne which means even if I've messed up, I can expect God to clean it up. Even when, I'm bre- even when I'm broken, I can ask God to fix it. Even when I drop the ball, I can still ask God to make it right. Not because of what I've done, but because of who God is. Let me wrap this up. i got enough faith to let God handle his way. Enough faith to pray and ask even when I'm unworthy. But the third thing that makes this man's faith so great is when he tells Jesus, I'm unworthy. Look at what he says. He says, Lord, you don't have to come because I have so much faith in you that all I need you to do is say a word. You don't have to show up. Just say a word. I don't need a lot of fanfare. Just say a word. I don't need anybody to lay hands on me with holy oil. Just give me a word. I don't need a prayer call from TBN or the Word Network. Just give me a word. And if I can get a word from the Lord, his word has authority over every issue in my house. Yes, it does. Watch what he says. This is deep. He says, Lord, I know how this thing works. I'm a man of authority, verse 8. If I tell him to come, he comes. If I tell folk to go, they go. If I say do this, he's going to do it. If I say jump, they're going to say how high. If I say it, it's going to get done. Now before you think he's bragging and boasting, what he's saying is that I understand the power of the word. Because if I speak a word, my servants do what the word says. And so Jesus, I believe that this sickness is under your authority. So if you speak a word, your word has authority over the sickness in my house. I gotta get out of here, but listen, there's a word game that's sweeping the nation called Wordle. Uh, Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It started out in the UK. I don't have time to tell you all the rules, but every day, the folk at Wordle come out with a word they want you to guess. It's kind of like a a digital crossword puzzle. And every day, folk across the world rack their brains trying to figure out what is that word. But can I tell you when it comes to the Word of God, You don't have to spend all your time wondering about the Word. Because whatever it is that you're going through, there's already a word for that. If it's sickness, there's a word for that. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by His stripes, we are healed. If all hell breaks loose, there's a word for that. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called called according to his purpose. If you're broke, there's a word for that. My God shall supply all of your needs. If if you got enemies, don't sweat it. He says, I will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. There is a word. This is the end of the sermon. But the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you this. The man says, speak a word and my servant will be healed. But Jesus says, I like your faith, and the boy is healed. The man says, speak a word to heal him, and I know he'll be all right. But Jesus says, I like your faith, and the boy is healed. 
You didn't catch it. Jesus never says the exact words that the man wanted to hear. All Jesus says is a word. Meaning this, as long as there is a word, there can be healing in your house. Friends, I don't know everything that's going on in your house. I don't know everything that's happening on the other side of the screen. But here's what I know. When there's a word, there can be healing. When you have faith in the word, that things can change in your situation. Wherever God is speaking, God is able. Because of who God is, there's power in the Word of God. I'm going to release the campuses. God bless you, East Campus. I'll see you next week. Those of you online, please stay with us. And if you're listening under the sound of my voice, would you please stand? God is able to change your situation. If he doesn't change your situation, he's able to change you in the midst of your situation. Friends, can I let you know that's why it's important to be part of a church where there is godly teaching? a godly teaching that's able to fortify your faith because wherever God is speaking through God's Word, there's change that's happening in the house, and that change can affect what's happening in your house. So listen, if you're listening to me today and you're not part of a church family, today is your day. We'd love to be your church family. In a few moments, I'm going to ask you to to come forward if you're here listening under my voice say I want to be a part of this church family or maybe I want to be a part of God's family how do you become a part of God's family I tell you over and over again when you confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior God becomes your father Jesus becomes your big brother and you become welcome into the family of God we'd love to be and welcome you be your church and welcome you into the family of God so if you're listening to me even right now online you want to be a part of the family of God. You want to be a part of this church. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to text BELIEVE to 98977. By texting BELIEVE to 98977, one of our leaders will lead you in a confession for our Lord Jesus Christ that you might be a part of God's family. Or maybe you're listening to me today and you are a part of God's family. And you're saying, Pastor, I'm moving through some things right now and I need God to fortify my faith. I need God to fortify my faith because I'm moving through something in which I've been praying for for a long time. And for whatever reason, God has a mood in that situation. We always say if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains. Well, what happens when God doesn't move the mountain? Maybe God is, maybe you need to pray for endurance, but God to give you the strength to climb that mountain. You need faith for endurance because the load you're carrying is too heavy. If that's you today, I want to encourage you to start coming to this altar. We'd love to pray for you right here and fortify your faith, letting you know that God is indeed able. If you're dealing with a sickness, a chronic condition that has not been healed, there's healing that's available in the house. We want to encourage you to come forward even. start. You can start to come right now even even in faith, saying, I need God to fortify my faith. There's some of you who are listening to me right now, and you're saying, you know, there's something I've done. I feel unworthy. I've made some mistakes. Pastor, you don't know what I've done. Let me share with you, no matter what you've done, where you're from, who you've been with, who you slept with, what you snorted, God still loves you. And my friend, you are able to come and receive the grace of God in faith. If that's you, I want to encourage you to start coming to this altar even right now. If you're listening to me online, you can text PRAY to 98977 and we'll be happy to pray with you and for you or let somebody know in the chat. And I especially want to pray 
for those of us who this week and in this season have had to deal with sudden change. Something has caught you off guard. Maybe it's some news you received. Maybe it's an Maybe it's an email, maybe it's something that, you know, you just didn't anticipate. It may have been an untimely death. But you've been walking through this COVID season. And you're saying, even right now, it's been a sudden change. And wow, it just caught me off guard. It's taken the wind out of me. If that's you. I want to encourage you to start coming even right now. Or text pray to 98977. If you're in any of those groups, would you even start coming right now? I want to speak in your spirit that God is able. God is able to change the situation or even change you in the midst of your situation. God is able. More of you need to be coming. In that balcony, you need to be coming. Online, you need to text PRAY to 98977. Hear me today. God is able. God is able. God is able to change your situation. Come on, I need my faith fortified even right now. I'm dealing with sudden change. I need faith to endure. The, I need faith to endure. I'm listening to you. We've got people starting to come, and I need to ask our prayer ministry to come forward, our small group leaders to come forward, our staff to come forward. Those of you all, we have many people who need prayer and fortifying their faith. God is able. God is able. And by faith, God will not fail.
It's so good to know that we have a God who won't fail us. I invite you all to join us here at this communion table. I like it uh, when our guest speaker a few weeks ago said, you don't have to be worthy to come to this table. You just have to be hungry. So to prepare our heart for communion, let us read together the Apostles' Creed. Would you join me as we read? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember, on the night our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Take and eat. Let's take the bread together. In the same way after supper, he took the cup, said, This is the new covenant in my blood given for you. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. Amen. Amen. Well, that ends our service. I just want to share a few things with you all. If at any point throughout the week, today, you need prayer, we are here and we would love to come alongside you if you need prayer. All you have to do is text PRAY to 98977 and someone will get back with you and we will come alongside with you uh, going to the Lord in prayer. A few other things. One is that if you were here, well, you all were here, weren't you? That was, I don't know why I even said that. But if you were watching the baptism and that's something that, you know, something like really pulled at you, you're like, I want to do that. And maybe you've been thinking about it for a while or maybe today was the first time that you had that thought of, I think I want to get baptized. We would love to be able to give you some more information about that and talk to you about it. If you're here in person, you can just go out to those little lobby bays that are out there. The, the second one, there's going to be someone there who will talk to you about getting baptized or there's you can go online and get more information in regards to that but we would love to talk to you about it also our VC kids is really in need of having volunteers and you can still do this through the first serve it's a great way to come and just see that the kids aren't scary and that they'll really love you and you'll love them so you can just go try it out check it out without a long-term commitment uh, but they're really in need of having um, Volunteers, so you can look at that online as well, the vineyardcolumbus.org slash this week to get more information in regards to that. And then lastly, we have uh, Ash Wednesday that's coming out. So we want to make sure you have that on your calendar. You're remembering that. It's March 2nd at 7 p.m. All of the campuses will be here at Cooper Road Campus at 7 p.m. There's also going to be an online service, uh, but just make sure that you tune in for that. This is a great space for us to get our hearts in a posture and remember Jesus's ministry and what he did for us. It's just preparing us for that Lenten season. And it's also gonna kick off our new sermon series that's starting where we're gonna be looking at the Bible and the narratives of the Bible and this ancient text and seeing how it actually relates to us today. So it's gonna be a really great sermon series. So we hope that we'll see you guys for that. So let me pray over you all. Lord, I pray that as we leave this space that you would remind us of how good you are and how able you are and how willing you are to meet every single one of our needs. That there is nothing that is happening to us 
that you don't care about and that you are not able to come in and help and resolve. Just remind us of that, Lord. Help us to not try to do it all on our own, but just to come to you and to encourage others to do the same. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed week, everyone.